Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations, and in this video I wanted to take y'all through a quick tour of my most recent booth setup. Now for our signage, I'm going to start at the top and kind of work our way down. We have an 8 foot by 2 and a half foot hand painted like canvas sign, and then we also have a 6 foot by 2 foot, maybe 2 and a half, I don't know, a Vista print sign, you know, a vinyl sign that we gotten from Vista print. We use 14 panels of eight foot by two and a half foot or eight foot by two foot sorry grid walls uh held together exclusively by zip ties uh <laughs> the future is now um we have another like vertical um you know signage over by the corner you know of our booth a little bit just more promo stuff uh we use two full 3d um mannequins like head feet everything uh, that we got on Amazon. We get our uh, grid walls from Store Supply Warehouse uh, in Bridgeton, Missouri, up by St. Louis. We use about 12 clamshell mannequins that are both male and female, and then three uh, female 3D torsos, and then a variety of like different shelving and stuff. I think I'll be taking you all through for a closer look of that a little later on. We also use a lot of hangers, a lot of like waterfall racks, which are like, uh, if you go to Store Supply Warehouse, they're a rack that like instead of hanging one hanger on it you can hang like up to ten. Uh, we also use some like cute fairy light curtains in the background also on Amazon. I'll try to have links to all this stuff that I use uh, down in the video description below. And then we always bring at least two if not three uh, six foot folding tables uh, from home. Now up on the jewelry side uh, here I have just a piece of the same grid square with some uh, elastic around it. That's how I display our ear wraps. And then, <clears throat> sorry for the poor quality, uh, you can see our pendant flats are displayed here. We also, for displaying ear cuffs, I get a lot of questions about that. I just display them in a ring tray. Now I could definitely use upgraded signage here, but uh, I had a business card so I wrote on the back of the business card and then stuck it in the tray. Uh, so the way that I made these pendant flats, and I think I will be doing a video just about how I make these, I actually used a bunch of like thin hair ties, wire hooks that I made, and another piece of the little grid paneling with a piece of like thin uh, leather over it and some eyelets just to make like little hangy spots. And you can see some of them are getting kind of jank, like uh, they're older now. <clears throat> we have our little dunce cap is what we call it. It's a large cone necklace display, really similar to the cone bracelet display that I saw on Etsy. The way that we carry our, oh, also these pendants, I just leave them on the flats all the time until they sell. Um, so pack down's really easy. For our earrings, we leave our earrings on this rotating display that I had gotten from firemountaingems.com. Uh, I like that it rotates. I like that it's round. Just, I don't know. I just like that. They do have some square options, which look very nice also. And the way that I keep the earrings on there is we thread the ear hook through and then put the little silicone uh, ear nut um, backer on there. This is how I display just regular old finger rings in a little finger ring display with like an acrylic tray. Um, it's like a little foam insert that has the uh, cuts already in it and I like it because it lets me hide the tags and so uh, I don't want people I want somebody to fall in love with the piece whether or not they know they can afford it because we do try to keep our prices pretty low but I, I want the shopping experience for our clients to be more about ooh shiny and less about oh my god that's too expensive <laughs> um just I don't know we can we can talk price later uh, but yeah, you can see just the little ways that we have the hooks on there. Sometimes I'll have a pendant with the tag on the bale. Sometimes I'll hide it on the back. Because um, I, I don't want everything to just look like a booth of little white tags. But it also helps me tremendously to have tags on every individual item. We you know have some business cards where people can just grab them. I try to have everything. The ear cuffs and the finger rings are right by where I usually stand to greet people. Randy's usually standing uh, behind the booth by the you know where we do like the checkout area but the finger rings and ear cuffs are the easiest to get stolen so that's why I stand up there by them. Everything else is a little bit more difficult to just like you have to actually like intentionally detach it. So here you can see much more up close about how we just have those ear backs on there. I've tried in the past having earrings sorted by 
like instead of having them priced individually we just have them priced by like section but I'm really bad at remembering which section it was from so again it's more for our side you know Randy and I just remembering oh we got a big empty spot there on the uh necklace displays now these randy had made for me out of just some like pine i think or poplar maybe even uh based off of i was at goodwill and had gotten a trophy display that like had the metal part removed and um so we did a bit of a picture frame back you can see i use a piece of ribbon with like two thumbtacks and then some hinges that i had gotten from the woodworking section of like michael's um and that way with just like again some more wood that like I got like 10 pieces for a dollar now this was like a decade ago but it worked and that holds it like an easel back you could very easily use picture frames to display your necklaces like this um <clears throat> or anything that kind of stands up well it got snagged on the velcro but I do have little velcro dots on the back to hold the necklaces so I can adjust the length and this way, even on my shortest displays, like the one that we're looking at here, I can hang a very long necklace, but have it look like proper. And they're a little difficult to hang one-handed, but that's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Everything's okay. <clears throat> uh, I used to use some 3D, like, leatherette displays that I had gotten from Fire Mountain Gems. And they were a little bit more pricey, but they looked wonderful. Like, I love them. But they took up a lot of space, like, volume-wise. And so when we were driving around in our car, like, carrying everything, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we had to downsize. So the, the wooden ones are heavier. I could have made them out of something lighter, but they take up less space. Here is how we display our acrylic horns that we cast in paint. That's how we sell our ears that we get from Aridani Studios. And then here's another, you can see these like cone caps. Uh, we use them to kind of blend our lamps into the rest of our display. Um, uh, it's just a lamp that we had gotten, I think, at like Target. Uh, but it helps so much to be self-reliant for our own lighting. Like I would always rather pay for electricity than be stuck in a dark dealer's room. Uh, and you can see, like, we, um, my stepdad Fred actually, um, had helped us do the wiring on the lamps to remove the base, but it just goes through both tiers of our little grid towers that we have set up here. And, uh, while we don't sell a whole lot off of the dunce cap style necklaces, um, it is a nice kind of, I'd rather have something displayed that we can, when something sells off the showcase, with the, like front and center of the booth, it's an easy necklace that we can like grab and move over. That way we don't have an empty spot and then we can refill those cones as it goes. And we, we have sold, you know, it, it's just not our most, our quickest moving uh, area. So now you can see here, these, we call them our bracelet humps. I made them out of half of a large PVC pipe covered with some leather that I had stained black. And Randy and I had drilled holes along one side of it and made little wire wrapped hooks to be able to actually hook the bracelets onto. And that way, <coughs> excuse me, that way it's much more difficult for somebody to just swipe a bracelet. But it was a pretty nice, it's not a perfect way, but everybody's going to find what way of displaying their product works best for them. But uh, we're pretty happy with it and our bracelet sales off of it are pretty good. I, I feel like if we had maybe a less intensity, like we had the holes about one inch apart, I feel like if we had done even just an inch and a quarter, uh, it would have reduced the intensity and people would get a little less overwhelmed by how many bracelets are on the display. Because sometimes if, if you know there's just too much to look at, then you might not notice the piece that you really like. But at the time of us designing our display setup, we were most concerned with displaying as much product as possible. So you can see we actually have some anklets and necklaces displayed um, on the little bracelet hump as well. So, uh, but yeah, why don't we just take the little clasp or hook end and just hook it right over. It's in super slow motion. <laughs> we just hook it right over that hook and that way um, it stays on there. And I like the curve 
to it better than um, just having them lay completely flat because sometimes if something has a color shift or if it really focuses on like a nice drape uh, and then we also have the we call them our tri beams our three bar uh, bracelet displays and we also always bring table covers now here we can have you can see a more up close look of our mannequins we don't use the floor pieces to hold the booth walls up we just make corners out of the eight foot by two foot grid walls and we also just recently got grid shelves off of um amazon it was very comparable to the pricing on the store supply warehouse and we use little like corner round bars to hold up uh, they hold a lot of weight but also lend themselves to structural support of our booth like we go overkill too with like the zip ties and stuff like i'd rather um waste a few zip ties than risk having a flimsy booth but uh all in all our booth our booth setup is always evolving always it's we've done you know 30 shows a year for almost 10 years and every single time it's been just a little different so if you guys have any questions comments or ideas please leave them down below i'd love to you know hear what your thoughts and answer your questions uh please check out all the links down in the video description for our social media and different like um you know ways that you can contact us and share pictures maybe of your own booth if you've had an idea that uh, we haven't thought of that you thought you think might be better for like displaying ear cuffs or something like I, I could use some input because <laughs> I'm always looking for ways to uh, improve but uh, if you enjoy my tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them please consider joining us over on patreon where we do our monthly craft along kits and cab boxes and digital download content and behind the scenes all sorts of stuff over there and also uh, please check out at the time of recording our newly founded Craft Along Con. It's craftalongcon.com. Uh, we're really excited to be putting together an event to teach everybody what we teach in our tutorials, but hands on and in person. So, uh, yeah, check that out. But until next time, y'all, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>